Side game number one, guys. Just moments away from getting into the action. The German Terran up against the Swedish Zerg. Sort of been practicing quite a bit in Korea, so his, his mechanics have never been sharper than they are right now. He's also looking good in those tight-fitting team shirts. I like blue. That's sort of a great nickname as well. It is. It's sort of great. Let's get into it. In the top right here, in the blue, which Todd likes so very much, this is Mal Sports' Hero Marine. We don't have any Russian casters. We actually lost our Russian commentary. I think game. they weren't ready, actually. Mm -hmm. And in the bottom left here, in the red, the Swedish Zerg. This is sort of. <laughs> All right. New repugnancy here, our first map. And like I said, I kind of expect both players to go up to three bases, four bases. I don't expect crazy cheeses out mm -hmm. of this series, even though I feel like it would be more on Hero Marine's side if he wanted to try something like that. But he, he's usually a little too proud to throw in, you know, too many uh, very aggressive builds, where sort of, sort of is one of the Zergs. Like, if there is some corners that you can cut to make sure that you get ahead economically because he doesn't cheese enough, it's like one of those huge Zergs that... I think you should maybe do it against. Hero Marine is one of those players that seems to uh, have a very, an almost stubborn mindset, but a mindset that works out for him. So it's not really like a, a bad thing at all, but he, yeah. has, he has sort of the, the mindset that there is a, better, a best way to play matchups, a strongest way to play certain styles that he will generally just play and really not really shake it up or get too crazy. You know, he, he's not really one of the most creative players in the whole world, but just very, very good at those meta builds, at battle mech, at bio, at bio tank, and just yeah, yeah. vanilla mech in general. Very, very solid. You tank. know what's funny? He's like often very critical of his opponent's builds because, you know, sometimes they'll play, play very aggressive. They'll throw like yeah. an all in here and there, somewhere in there. But now he's facing a guy that doesn't all in very much, that plays straight up, you know, a mechanic relying style. So. You can't be critical of that style, right? Like, if no. he loses, like, it has to be straight up. Like, you couldn't have too much criticism about it. So that's going to be interesting to see if sort of can do well and how Hermione would think about it in this case. But so far, it's just going to be the one Reaper doing a little bit of harassment on the other side of the map. Hasn't been able to do uh, really much of anything. Hasn't killed a unit yet. No, it's just mainly for scouting here and good micro from Sorter to keep those limbs alive for the most part here. They get pretty well damaged. And he's also covering that Reaper cliff, so Hero Marine can't dart through that mineral line and jump down to that low ground where he's sending the Reaper right now. Sort of trying to catch the Reaper if it does try and pop back up. New what? Repugnancy is one of those maps that's actually too, it's, it's actually not too bad for Terran against Zerg here because you have a lot of cliffs and a lot of really good tank positions as well later on. How do you like the two more Crypt Tumor location? That Crypt Tumor location? Oh, we'll connect the third and the natural a little bit quicker. Yeah, very nicely done actually. Uh, Hero Marine trying to s stop the drone from being able to take that third, certainly slowing it down. You want to get that third at like two and a half minutes, and Hero Marine slowed that thing down to 320, almost a minute delay on this natural hatchery. Yeah, he's, oh, really, hatchery. he's really delaying that super well right now, but eventually he's going to have to give it up. Yeah, sort of with the zoning out from the Queen, gets that down. Some nicely placed overlords, by the way, through every single avenue that Hero Marine could come in from. Like there's one here at the top, one in the center, and one at the bottom. So he's got all of his space covered in terms of being able to spot these Hellions and uh, the one Reaper here to make sure he doesn't take any damage, ideally, from these. And uh, the creep oh. spread is in full effect, Maynard. Overlord's gonna fly into the main base on the other side to try and spot the starport. Now, I am I was already a fan of Hero Marine, but I'm an even bigger fan right now. We've got a battle cruiser opening here, Todd, and it doesn't look like the Overlord of Sword of is gonna see it. He, but he does see that there's a starport with nothing on the Tech Lab building. Normally, if this is a normal 1-1-1 with the Tech Lab, Cloak's on the way, and a Viking or a Banshee's yeah. on the way. So this actually might be enough information from Sword of to know that it is a Battlecruiser opening. Even though Hero Marine tried to trick him by starting up a Liberator, the BC is on the way. And he's already got quite a few Queens. He's already up to five with one more on the way. So he's, you know, kind of getting ready. Like, Sword of is one of those guys that trains a lot. I'm sure he's faced this many times. Like, so we'll see exactly how well he can react to this behind this. Wouldn't be surprised if Hero Marine went into a fairly quick third command center, as, again, he's one of these... You know, great macro guys. It actually drops down uh, yeah, two additional barracks first yeah. and foremost here yeah, to keep up with his economy uh, and the production here of the back of this. So how many battle cruisers do you think is the ideal number if you want to go for this build? I think it depends on how well the Zerg is handling them. Like if your ba first battle cruiser gets really well deflected, like there's too many spore crawlers, too many queens, then you just pull out of the battle cruiser strategy and go heavier into the factory units and buy. But you have to decide before that, no? Like, wouldn't you? So, if well, you start a second battle cruiser and the first one's doing really bad, you cancel. The you second? have about 30 minutes before the next battle cruiser pops out because of how long it takes to build. <laughs> so you can actually just cancel it and get your money back. 30 minutes? Come on, they're not carriers. <laughs> 
Well, that first BC is out, and it's actually switching off from the starport immediately, so he only needs tents to get the one. And so, you know what? Sort of actually doesn't have a read on this battle cruiser attack. He doesn't have that many spore crawlers or that many queens covering these mineral lines. Yeah, they're kind of out of position, so I guess that scouts. Uh, he was like very wary about the Hellions. Like obviously, you have to be careful. Actually, that third base is the one exposed now because the queens are going towards the main base. Obviously, he still has the links as well. The Chris is massive in taking the information too. And that Barracuse is on the Rampage. Uh, certainly is. The Queen's coming in from the natural on the third base to try and damage it, but there's plenty of dead space here under Repugnancy for that Battlecruiser to escape, and he's going straight into tank production. Reactor on the starport to stick again. There's Medivacs out. Very strong start here for Gabe. And, of course, the BC still being alive means that it can just be a nuisance later on in the game and even just pick off Overlords. Oh, you want some too, Overlord? <laughs> You're in the wrong place. Come get some. There's a nice little bit of creep cancelling there from Sordov. He saw that the Hellions were hitting the edge of that creep, didn't want to lose those tumors, so that was a nice little move from him. But he's certainly taken a little bit of damage in the early game, and look how much further along the upgrades are for the Terran here. Plus one attack, over halfway done. Yeah, so the third commencer is really delayed. Like, Hillmarine's going for additional barracks before anything here. Yeah, this, I'm really surprised. This actually, this actually looks like a big two-base attack, Todd. Yeah. And I think, like, out of somebody like Sordov, like I said, you can expect the fourth base, the macro, and the fourth hatchery is there on location, kind of far away from the main base. Maybe that's where he's going to want to put the emphasis on the push as he's getting one more tank here. So maybe like a three tank push or something like that? What do you think? I, I think the, the main thing that he's going to have here, considering the amount of production he has, is just a ton of bio units. So yeah. the tanks obviously do help a ton for that splash damage. These spore crawlers really not helping at all. They're right on the edge of the main base here. So the Queens are going to have to do it themselves. And the tactical jump is off call down here. So that thing can just zip on back home. Vainling's connecting with some of the Marines here. Oh, he Marine. didn't use the tactical jump. He lost the BC. Did he? Yeah. Oh, my God. To the Queens well, in the main base. That's a pretty big blunder there from here, Marine. But he is still putting on a lot of damage at the front. So it might not matter. Vainling's coming in for the south. Sort of. Oh, just a hot pick up there from here, Marine, to save those Marines and pull on back out of the action. But, of course, that's just wave one. We got seven Marines at a time being made back at home here for Hero Marine. And yeah, that was weird. I guess he was obviously looking elsewhere, but it's pretty important oh, not to lose that battle, battle cruiser. It's your precious. It is your precious. He pulls on back there. 1-1 one, one, nearly done for the Zerg. Plus one attack is done for these Marines. Medivac's still alive as well, and here Marines going for that big two-base push. Yeah, so if we, look, if we look at units lost, like it obviously would feel a lot better if you hadn't lost that one BC and had repaired it for the Still looks good for the Terran, push. though. Yeah. Queens. Are you lost, Queens? <laughs> Wrong part of town, sister. Creek Trim is getting taken down in the front here, and Kira Marine can start to move those tanks closer and closer. Combat shield seconds away from getting done. Ten more hit points in every single one of the Marines, and there are oh so many. The Bantlings sort of rethinking their, themselves here. They're down quite a bit in army supply. The Terran with a massive free spread of units. Look at this big free spread of Marines from Big Gabe. He's not even scanning. He's at home. <laughs> this is my house. Oh, I like this one sort of to try and pick off those reinforcements with the Lings. He is going to get a little bit of damage done. A tank pick off some Marines. That's great. But is the front door going to be cleaned up? The Banelings rolling on through that tank field. Looking for the Marine connections. But the split is too good. Very little Marines, if any, dying there. And sort of is going to be folding to the pressure here of the German Terran. Doing too much damage. GG. Hero Marine getting a clean game one. Such precision with his timing here. Very much surgically done there. <laughs> Very well done by the German Terran. This is kind of, you know, what we expect, I think, coming, going into this series. The experience, the confidence from Hero Marine really showing here in this game. Number one, a sort of, you know, this is what he's known for. Just macro, get some drones. But the defense just wasn't good enough to really allow him to propel himself into the mid game with four bases, a good drone count and enough units. And to be honest, if this surprised me, I'm not surprised that sort of didn't expect this because out of your marine, what do you expect? A third command center? Pretty early. A yeah. third base. Macro, you know, more e-base, more upgrades. But no, here marine's like, you know what? I'm going to deny the information by killing your first overlord. And then I'm going to keep you busy with the one battle cruiser. What will you not expect? Me not to get a third command center, a ton of bio units, march across the map and do a crazy push. There is very little scarier in tournaments than a player that's so good at macro and has been known for macro for so long that has learned some really strong all-ins. Something that's unexpected, something that hits really, really hard, a sharp timing attack. I mean, the only thing that sucked for Hero Marine is that he lost a battle cruiser, but other than that, that was clean as a whistle. Yeah, that push just looked unstoppable, like it was not even close. He had so many Marines, he pre-split, kind of like in, in the Bomber-esque fashion, didn't even scan. He's like, you know, you know what, I'll use more mules for the time being. <laughs> what I really like about this build, too, is that, like, as long as you do damage, even if this doesn't work, you can still fly your main orbital to a new base and you know, keep up with the pressure and more attacks. But obviously, there is a lot on the line when you do that first big push. You need to do damage. You need to trade really well. Yeah, strong game from here, Marine. Great start here. Sort of is a veteran, though. 
a very storied pro gamer. He's uh, got the mindset to be able to shake that off and continue along. Sort of one of those guys that's been around for a really long time, yeah. but hasn't been able to sort of crack that round of 16, round of 8 line that Hero Marines actually managed to break through several times in his career. Oh, he has, but a long time ago. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, way back in the day for sure. Yeah. I remember the one dream, like he made it to the semis. Yeah. But uh, yeah, sadly, since then, hasn't had the success that he was looking for. So let's see here if he can stay focused, if he can come back stronger. In that map number two, we're going to be playing on Acropolis here. Yeah, this is a much better map for ZVT on the Zerg's favor. A bit of a hard map for Terran for the most part. But they do have some strats catered for this map in particular. We'll see if he goes for it. And it's up left here in the blue, represented by Mao Sports. This is the German Terran, Hero Marine. Alex is having a chat here. I think he's reading an essay to the crowd. And it's in the not Alex, but he's, this guy's telling his life story. <laughs> <laughs> and in the bottom right here, the Swedish Zerg in the red. This is sort of. All right. So we got just standard openers so far. We're going to have the hatchery first here from Sortov. And I mean, I really thought that he was going to be more ready for the battle cruiser because he was getting so many queens. But uh, you were right, not seeing. The fusion core is really uh, kind of yeah. what made him not know about this. Like, he, and he was so worried about the Hellions at the front. And I mean, it is worrying. Like, you have like six plus Hellions and a Reaper at the front of your base, like at the edge of the creep. You have to worry about them kind of running in and frying a lot of drones. Indy's really interested in the fact that, that the Overlord goes through this terrain here. He's like, guys, look, this is so interesting. I'm like, okay, Indy. <laughs> <laughs> Sick call out. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an overlord, all right. Yeah, well spotted. Uh, <laughs> it's the second one. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> Shots uh, fired. Yeah, no, love to Andy, though. This guy is the only observer we have this tournament. He's been working so hard. He's been uh, observing long days here, and he's got a long day ahead of yeah. him, and another long day tomorrow. He's so. got a third of the workload that Mapu has at Home Story Cup, so I don't <laughs> yeah. think we can play yeah. him too much. Uh, <laughs> it, Andy needs to get that Home Story Cup Observer shift baptism of fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sort of. This game, he needs to get the clean scout in case Hero Marine was to do something uh, a little bit more on the extreme side of things, like we saw in the last game with the one battle cruiser. I wonder actually, like after you see one battle cruiser, you also kind of would like to know whether there is a second one on the way, right? Because yeah. otherwise, you just kind of like keep on making queens, which he. Would be good against small battle cruisers, but bad against everything else. Then again, I guess when you reach like, let's say five to six queens, you're kind of set already against the initial one. Yeah. The strong thing about the battle cruiser opening is that even if it does get deflected, it's a constant threat, and it actually can be part of your push later as well. Because it's just a really tanky air unit with tons of armor points, and if you res if you research weapons refit or yeah. you know Yamato cannon, that thing will one shot queens, and it'll really damage the static defense as well. Look, Hero Marine really wants that creep tumor, but unfortunately doesn't connect with it, doesn't pick it off. And the thing that makes this map a little bit tough for Terran that it's actually really hard to get like Hellion run bys and stuff like that. That makes you know big open naturals can sometimes be great for Terran yeah. in that regard. I mean, you do get a pretty safe third base at least. That was funny, but with Reaper, it was like low on HP. The Queen turned around, he's like, "Don't turn your back on me. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going?" Uh, the, Terran, the, the Reaper here for the Terran just regenerating its hit points, still being the most important thing is that it is alive. And the one thing that Terran's got against uh, Zerg on this map is that there are a lot of Reaper ledges and a lot of easy paths into the main base for the yeah. Reaper. Yeah, the Protoss can actually wall off with a single pylon on these ledges, but not so much for the Zerg. Well, what was the ultimate mind game that Hero Marine could do here? Prevent the scouting from the Overlord, go for the oh, same oh, oh. Hellions that he did last game. And I was going to say, not do Battle Cruiser, and then Sotov would be very worried about this, but he actually drops down another fusion core here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same push or quick third command center this time? Yeah, I guess I mean, like maybe he doesn't have to make up his mind that early. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The Overlord coming in here for sort of, and usually when this tech lab finishes, you can get you can get Cloak and a Banshee right away. So that might be telling for sort of again. Yeah. I, I but there's the whole mind game of, is, is he going to do it again, or is he going to trick me and start Cloak now in a Banshee? Yeah. I mean, at this high level, you really don't want an extra Spore Crawler if you don't need it, for sure. That's why you still you will often see just the minimum amount of Spore Crawlers to deal with uh, with Banshee harassment. Generally, the natural doesn't even have Spore Crawlers yeah. because the third and the main are usually the most vulnerable. And the crazy thing is, extra scouting won't even help you in terms of adding stuff around your base because it's tactical jumping across the map. So you could spread out as many overlords as you want, free spread. It's going to jump on yeah. your side of the map. The most popular jump spot here on this map is between the natural and the third base because the battle cruiser can just escape to the north and carpet bomb those drones to safety. It's like a carpet bomb them. Yeah, just pew pew them on the way through. It cruises and battles now. 
<laughs> I like that, that. With that Reaper coming in the main day. Sees the layer timing, so that's a good scout there for the Reaper. Oh, third base left a little bit open, but Hero Marine rethinking the Hellion strat. Yeah. There's actually not too much of a standing army for, for Sword of. He primarily just has Queens. And this time he went for the third command center, which I really like. Didn't even add additional barracks first. Just straight up that third command center. He took two more gases, two, two more refineries. Yeah, I actually think... And he starts Yamato. I, I actually think this might be a mech follow-up here for, uh, for Hero Marine. As he's getting those extra gases nice and early here, and probably going to keep that battle cruiser train pumping here, making sure there's many of them out there harassing the Zerg. First BC moments away from being completed. He does lose one heli in there to the Queens. All right, let's follow that BC here. Yeah, second BC is queued up. So Where this are you is going to? Uh, I mean, usually between the natural and the third is a good spot. Between main and natural, now he went. So he that's going to spore right. around that area, but there is no spore in the main base to move there. But and the Queens are out of position again, sort yeah. of. I, th I think that because the Hellions knew where the Queens were, right? Because he's attacking down there at the third base. So you send your Queens down there to deal with the Hellions, and then you just send the BC where the Queens are not. They get, this BC is going to take a ton of damage, Todd. Let's see if this thing escapes. Yeah, that's oh. four was at the back here. Yeah, I think he didn't see it. Oh, I think it might be just surviving here. Damn, that's close. Really tilting for the Zerg when that happens. It just survives. Wow. 34 hit points, six kills on that one battle cruiser that gets away. He's going to be able to head on back home. Repair that, and then head out again. Actually, a nice follow-up scout from Sotov. He just sent a Ling at the front, and he saw additional Hellions. So he might kind of be able to tell already that this could be a mech build. Because obviously, like, yeah, he hasn't had any follow-up uh, Overlord kind of flying and get any scout. Yeah, so he sends one more Ling right now. I like that. He's consistently trying to scout. He wants to make sure he knows what he's up against exactly. So there are some Terrans out there like play about on this map, in my opinion, I think Mech is actually quite strong this map. There's some really nice choke points that you can own when you have a great number of Siege Tanks. And considering that Hero Marine is going for double armory here, it might be vanilla Mech, but certainly Battle Mech is a lot more popular at the moment in the middle yeah. of the matter. Wow, this is crazy, actually. Upgrade-wise, like, he's going to be starting this so early, and I would say Banelings are not the units you really want against this, right? Like, against Mech, for a long time, it was all about, you know, getting roaches and all that, then... It kind of, like, people got so much better. They dif discovered stuff like Swarm Host and oh, exactly to play them against Mech. The power of Vipers, which are very important too. And with the Infestation Pit on the way, it's a good hint that Sort of knows when he needs to be getting here. The Hellions and Battlecruisers joining up here. Like I said, the Battlecruiser survives, and it is a force for your push as I guess well. the Yamato's the Queens? Yeah, the Yamato's for the Queens, certainly. The Banelings need to be split with these Hellbats, but they already have so many hit points. They're just tanking the front line here, and they are still a problem for Sword of. He's lost a lot of his Queens, and Hydralists actually suck against Battlecruisers, oh Todd. God. The BC is going to start carving through here. we got a run by, but there are Hellbats back at home for Big Gabe, dealing with the Lings. The Natural's a different story. He's taking a bit more damage there, but it's only denied mining time, and no cancel on the hatchery. Sword of losing the fourth base. Sort of falling apart at the seams here. And that, I mean, that counter attack did almost nothing. It killed four SCVs and everything else got sniped here. And there, tactical jumps available. So even like this, like, Kilmarine is like fully confident he's not going to lose any of these battle cruisers here. That was such a good trade for him. And keep in mind that these upgrades for the mech units are also making these battle cruisers more armored as well. So you get the ship weapon, or rather the ship units are also getting those armor upgrades. So that's pretty nice as the Hellions are getting a little bit more uh, upgrades. And as we see, it is vanilla mech, just just Hellion tank, not Hellion cyclone. Oh, I think he's going to go for cyclones because he's getting mech field accelerator and he's oh, making okay. a bunch of tech clouds no, in the main base. That is true, that is true. So the tanks are looking just for defense for now. It's kind of it's kind of weird. Like if you see a lot of hydralisks, you definitely want more tanks than you want cyclones. Yeah, my tool's almost up, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> this looks so annoying for the Zerg to deal with. A lot of hydras though. Getting on top of these BCs. Tactical jump. Yeah, he's going to have to jump before he can use Yamato again. Peace out. Almost a shame. Oh, that's bold. But going to get away with it. Peace. I'm out of here. See you soon after a nice nice repair here at the third base. So I think that actually, as we speak about bases, that's the only thing missing for Hero Marine here is a fourth base, but certainly it's not going to be too long away. In fact, the fourth is being built, or actually it's a fifth CC, is the fourth is being built down here yeah. in the natural. I think Sotov's best chance is going to have to come through uh, some miracle infester play, like we, we see him getting pathogen glands right now. Some well, good fungal, some good neural parasite maybe. Well, that's the thing. like. Uh, Infestors are really good against Battle Mech, and this actually might be a deliberate bamboozle from here, Marine. If he just keeps making Hellions and tanks, the Infestors are actually not going to be that super great yeah. anymore. The tanks really annihilate them. He's only got five tanks right Ooh. now, so we'll see if he keeps on making more of those, or if he focuses more on uh, Cyclones and Hellions. Failing run by doing a little bit of damage there. It worked. <laughs> kind of, yes. It did damage, technically. And the BC still being a massive threat here. For oh, Solar. he sent that ahead. He sent one ahead. 
Got a scouting BC with the just three one Yamato. Backside. Well, you know, Yamato is just free damage, man. It's, a, it's it's something that doesn't get broken unless you actually kill the battle cruiser before it fires. He like spotted the infestors. That's very important because now he has to be extra careful. Yeah, I think that now I think that he's forcing out the infestors and he's just going to keep making tanks, which is exactly what he's doing. He's not making any more cyclones. It's just tanks, just Hellions, and soon going to be heading towards Starport and getting that air army as well, or even just into Thors, which is the one of the strongest things you could do against this Spire follow-up, which, you know, sort of is almost certainly going to go for this greatest Spire Broodlord follow-up here. And we're seeing sort of Cam here, first person, checking out that mini-map and getting those Infestors ready to fight. The Ling run by here before the planetary is finished, but plenty of Blue Flame Hellions mean the Lings aren't going to do too much at all. Yeah, I mean, every single one of those Ling run by has been shut down perfectly here by Hero Marine, always on point. We don't need to see his eye tracker to know he's looking <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere at once. That's what I think, like, if we ever get to see Serral's eye tracker, it'll just be one big blob in the middle of the screen. I actually won't be moving around <laughs> all. He's, he's, he's he om sees omnipresent. All. So we are seeing a few more cyclones here from Hero Marine, which is going to be handy against the Corrupt account when it gets out a little bit further in the, the game. But The Quish has been denied a decent amount, by the way, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. like, it's the not BCs. really going anywhere right now. Well, I mean, the BCs themselves have actually been doing a great job with the Quish just barreling on through, carpet bombing down that creep. And this is a scary army for sort of to deal with. He doesn't have any Vipers. He has Infestors, a lot of Hydralisks, and a lot of Lings. But this army is built for killing all of that stuff. It feels like uh, Vipers, right, would help a good amount. Uh, absolutely. I don't think sort of knows that there's this much of a tank count. He sees it now. He's getting Corruptors right now. Yeah, he has to get into Broodlords. He needs something to deal with the tanks. This army doesn't deal with a massive tank count. He might try to use the mobility of his army to try and, you know, buy time here to get stronger units. Those sort of tanks are not that fast. Uh, they certainly aren't. And that base does need to be lifted here. Hero Marine losing a lot of SCVs. Oh my god, the down. That's a dead Infestor right there. And the Hellions are actually chasing down the Hydras as well. Fungal goes down. He could go for Neurals as well. He has energy on the Infestors, but he just gets yamato would One Infestor survives, and these Hydras are getting chased back by a plus one attack upgraded Hellions. Yeah, some big Yamato were thrown down there. I think he's down to one single Infestor, and might be zero soon if that guy does his stuff. I'm running home. Corruptors, Queens are in position. Sort of, he needs to have a hold here. Oh, this is unfortunate. Wait, you're drunk. That's a full energy Infestor going down there, sort of just really starting to fall apart a bit. Hero Marine is right in his face with an army that doesn't look like it can be stopped. This tank count is way too high. There are no blinding clouds for the Zerg, no Vipers, no nothing. Look at the supply. The Terran using Mech has more supply than the Zerg right now, sort of struggling to hold on. And he's going to try his best. Of sorts, the Corruptors can deal with the Battle Cruisers for the most part. They tactical jump out of there. Meanwhile, the tanks and the Hellions combined are just tearing apart the Zerg on the ground. This does not look holdable at all for Sword of. He's trying his best, but even the Cyclones getting amongst it, getting rid of some of these Corruptors, less Broodlord potential. There's actually only three Broodlords on the way here for Sword of, and that is just not convincing. Yeah, I mean, the damage has already been dealt here that Hatchery is going to die. Hiromin can pull back if he wants to. He's on five bases. His economy being left untouched in the meantime here. Why it's all of this was happening. Yeah, he sees the Broodlords. Might be getting some Thors here, but it looks like he's happy to just use the Cyclones for their anti-Broodlord countermeasures. I like Thors a lot more, but honestly, at this point, Hero Marine can do whatever he wants. He's so far ahead. He's just going to send in the tanks for a bit more damage, leaving them unseaged to just DPS through those Broodlings. But of course, they are slowly, slowly going to go down to the Broodlings over time. So he Double the back. army supply for Hero Marine, by the way. Yeah, I mean, he's super, super far ahead here. I don't actually see how sort of gets this game in the bag. I mean, maybe if Hero Marine doesn't respect the Broodlord count, and he just keeps losing the Cyclones to the Infestors and the Broodlords, then maybe. But you this looks very, very rough. You saw resources lost, by the way? I missed it. Like, he was slightly cost-effective here. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh, my God. This is so rare to see a game like this. Like, you got such good trades the whole game. Yeah, that is a good game for Terran right there. 3-3 three, three on the way for the Mech Army. This thing is upgraded. It hits so hard, and this is such a tough spot for those tanks to be dug out of when he sieges up here. This is so rough for Sordov. He's got those Infestors, he's got those Broodlords. The Battle Cruiser's coming in to deal with the Broods. They Yamato them down, and he's down to three Broods here with a couple Corruptors in the sky. I think that's just going to be an A-move victory here for Hero Marine as he takes the 2-0 and is already on match point here against the Swedish Zerg. Very convincing from Big Gabe here, showing why uh, we thought he was the favorite. A regular on the WC circuit. A lot of deep runs and looking for yet another one. She's sort of in uh, Big Gabe haven't fi faced each other since 2018, so it's been quite a while. They don't see each other at tournaments too often, even being, uh, you know, it, feel, it feels like the, the European players have got such a history together, like every single player's got a yeah. history against the other. But at the same time, there's so many good players that you can't play all of them, right? Yeah, like, exactly. if you lose to one of them, then that's it. Hmm. 
And it's unfortunate to sort of not be able to play his best games here on stage. You know, he's a very, very good player. We've seen him play incredibly clean games, but that game on Acropolis, a few mistakes, a few misreads. Even in game one, the, the misread on the BC is doing a little bit too much damage and just not able to get the job done against the plan of Humorine. Humorine keeps having a game plan every single game and sort of lets him get, to get, lets him get away with it. Yeah, I mean, it just feels like Saltov's not ready for the first battlecruiser in particular. Like, the spores weren't in the best key position. The queens were too far the front, focusing exclusively on the uh, on the Hellions. And that was well done on Hero Marine. You know, he's the one forcing those mistakes. Without the Hellions at the front, obviously, there's a lot le less of a threat, and then the queens could defend so much more easily. But as soon as you start losing a bunch of drones <laughs> and are forced to go into a lot of spores, it's weird because it feels like it's almost like, you know, the PvZ build, right? You open Stargate to force spores to prevent workers from being made all the time, to force more units, in this case, uh, queens, as opposed to links on the ground. And it works out very well. Like, yeah. everybody has perfected that style where you can't let the Zerg player drone up too much. It's a 400 mineral, 300 gas oracle that can teleport and has so many armor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good unit. Great example. And the bottom right here in the blue on match point, the German Terran looking to get into the next round. This is Mal Sports's Hero Marine. And in the top left in the red, the Swedish Zerg against the ropes. This is sort of. Gonna have to adjust better here to the opponent of his oppo opponent. Uh, make sure he minimizes the lo those losses because we know that if Soto can kick it uh, into full gear, you know, get a fourth base running, reach the ideal drone count that he wants to go for, he's a very, very scary player. But he hasn't been able to do that so far. Every single aggression that's been thrown his way has done more damage than it feels it should have. And uh, again, that's credit to Hero Marine, but sort of, I think he's definitely capable of handling those early game attacks better. A super greedy opening here from Hero Marine. You don't see it every day. And he's going for the CC first here on King's Cove. Bad news for Sword Off here is that King's Cove is actually one of the best maps in the map pool for this Battlecruiser mech style that Hero Marine showed us in the last game in Acropolis. But, and, and I mean, there's even money that we're going to see another Battlecruiser in this game. Like, Big Gabe keeps getting so much damage done with it, there's no reason for him to do anything else. But maybe he has a specific strategy for this map that's different. Yeah. And I mean, it's like such a small thing too, like to do the thing that's not really expected, right? You mentioned mm -hmm. it's good to do it on this map. But then the opponent might finally be getting ready for it properly, and that's when you don't do it. And he's like, oh, well, well, I got ready for this uh, for nothing, basically. Mm -hmm. And he's sort of pulling out of gas here, looking for that fast third base. And obviously with the CC first opening, your Reaper isn't going to be out to stop this from happening. So at least that's that's a small little nice thing for sort of. He's going to get the third base out with too much fuss. But uh, very much a lull in the action because it is just a greedy opening for both players. Yeah, sort of sees the second command center now, and he knows like exactly what the opener was from here, Marine. Mm -hmm. So we can start on deciding how he's going to make his own adjustments. Maybe drone up a little bit extra. He's going to be safe for longer than usual. Yeah, he's already got what he needs against Reaper defense. Everything was well timed for sort of like this is the normal opener for a Zerg against a Terran going for the Reaper fast expand. So the Lings are already here, waiting to be useful. The Queen gets the Creep Tumor out without tussling with the Reaper, which is always nice. But of course, the Terran's economy means it's going to be a problem in a couple minutes. I really think that if sort of can get some early game momentum, you know, and reach a good drone count, it's going to look like a completely different series. But the problem so far has been just that and being able to get there. And in this game with Hero playing very differently, it should be much easier for sort of, you know, to build up that Walker count, go into that fourth base, also on the map, you know, like this. you can take the one that's in between your natural and third base. Oh, goes the creep tumor and he gets it too. That's really annoying for sort of. Doesn't have energy for another tumor at the moment, so that slows down the creep spread. And considering there's a marine on the way for hero marine, this is actually the beginning of the build order for a BC opening. He's getting those two marines out to deny scouting on these overlords. It's very, very important when you're going through this BC stuff. Not gonna be able to get a Viking out. So I mean, at this point, if you scout there it is. the tech lab on the starboard, like you have to know, and in this case, he's even going to be able to see the fusion core. He, he actually is going to see the fusion cores this time. So this is this is a little bit of a, half, a glass half full situation for sort of. The battlecruiser opening has been scouted. Can he deal with it a lot better this time as a result? Sometimes, even if you see it coming, you can just, there's, there's players out there that just struggle against the BC opening. Yeah. And I got to say, Hero Marine has been so good with those Hellions. Not just, you know, threatening, but not really overextending, which 
a lot of players will do in this position. Like you got, you know, six to eight Hellions when single Reaper is like so tempting to say, all right, you know what? Let's just go for it. I can try and kill some drones. If I get like 15 plus, it's totally worth it. But uh -huh. then you go for it and the Zerg splits are good enough. His links are in position, the Queens are there too. And then you lose everything and kill only like three drones. And you've lost map control. Chris Press is going to get too crazy uh, for you to be able to handle. And then it's really bad all of a sudden. But Hermione has been staying extremely patient with his Hellions every single time. And I know that now because I say this, he's probably going to overextend and lose everything. But <laughs> I figured I'd still say it. Well, we actually, I actually love this from Sora. This is one of the strongest things you can do against a guy that's opening BCs. You're not going to have Banshees. You're not going to have uh, units that are good against armored units. So something like a Roach all in or a Nidus Worm with a lot of Queens are going to be very strong. Where does he throw it down? Because he lost the Overlord that was near the base of his uh, opponent. I think he was dropping it down before the Overlord got taken out. I mean, you can use a, uh, as, as a Changeling or a Zergling or something like but that. But he has no Overseer scouting. there. Yeah, it doesn't look like he does, yeah. And Maybe at the front. Too. I mean, an attack at the front just isn't a stingy. If you get it inside the main, that's where the production yeah. is. That's where you really want it. But how is he going to get the scout inside? I think he's, he's morphing an Overseer. Yeah, the Overseer's That's going to take a long time, though. That's like really off timing right now if he goes across the map. Yeah, I think he's flying that in the center right now. Mm. Yeah, but the there's o there is something on the way. Yeah, the Overseer's on the way here. No, no, there's something at the bottom from here, Marine. What is that? Uh, th this Viking is almost like fishing for that. Yeah, it's looking for it. So it means like he's going to see it, in which case it's much easier to defend against it. How yeah. many Queens and units are loaded up into the Nidus? Uh, I'm not sure if any are just yet. Yeah, they're just scooting around, like dealing with the battle cruiser harassment. you got to be afraid when you're Terran and you see this many Queens. That is a lot of Queens. Yeah, he's putting the Nidus outside right now. you got to put it somewhere. So with the Queens pushing forward here, even though he doesn't really have that crease spread at the front, there's that there's that uh, high ground Nidus Worm here. He does have the back one in front. This tank is really huge. The Lings are going for the natural here. Can Sword of break this line? The Hellions getting surrounded. There's a Sword of's moment. Can he break through these Hellions of Hero Marine? They're on the top of the tank as well. If the tank goes down, and the Nidus Worm will pop here in the natural. The main Nidus Worm has popped out as well, but it's got taken down there by those tanks of Hero Marine. And it looks like Hero Marine is starting to hold. Sort of strategy, getting deflected. Yeah, this is looking really bad, and now that Hero Marine knows, all he has to do is stay put, to make sure he defends every single Nidus that's being planted down. It's going to be so hard to get one inside of the main base, so he goes for one outside, but I mean, there are tanks on the high ground now, and that oh, the Battle Cruiser is still going ham on the other side of the map. Yeah, this Battle Cruiser is going to make sure that Sort of is even more all in than he already He's is. He's got Yamato! Yeah, he certainly does. The Queens are going to be Yamato down as quickly as he can. The Marines on the high ground also. He has no high ground vision. So these Marines are just mincing up those Queens. And this tank here in the high ground that needs to siege up could seal the deal, but he doesn't even need it. Hero Marine with the cleanest 3-0 that we've seen in this tournament. A great, great series from him. Massive confidence from the German Terran. Great stuff. His TVC not in question here. One of the